This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. What's up and welcome to Q&A, the show where I take your questions and answer them here in video format. A ton of questions to get into. Um, let's start with Devonta Travis, who says, no matter what happens this year, do you see this team going through a hard rebuild within the end of next year? Or do you see this team uh, doing a soft reboot? I think this is a very interesting question because... I think even if this season went perfectly, like if Deshaun Watson played through the roof, he was playing at an MVP level, the Browns got to that conference championship game, maybe even won the Super Bowl, you were always going to have to do some rebuilding around this roster because you got guys like Zadarius Smith, who's getting to 30. I believe he's over 30 at this point and at the end of his contract. You also have guys like um, Deontay, not Deontay Foreman, but... You also have guys like Dalvin Tomlinson. You have a bunch of guys like that on this roster that, you know, Shelby Harris is another one that there are much older are probably getting past their point of usefulness. Like we're watching this team right now. And like outside of all the problems that are Watson related, one of the problems that we haven't really talked about as much is that this team is a lot older than we're used to seeing Browns teams, especially since 2018, like the Browns, since they started tanking with Sashi Brown way back in the day, we're always one of the youngest teams in the NFL. That's not the case anymore. The Browns are an older team, and you can see it when they play. Amari Cooper's another example of a player they were going to have to probably refresh and flip out. Um, so, yeah, they were always going to have to do some rebuilding no matter what this season ended in. Um, I think this probably accelerates the process because now you add quarterback to the list of things that you're looking to rebuild and the urgency that you want to add quarterback to that list is going to be a lot more serious, right? We talked about it at the beginning of the season. I said, even if Deshaun Watson played well, you probably won't want to consider getting a quarterback if one that makes sense comes across you um, in the draft. Now we're getting to the point to where it's like, hey, you really, really got to consider it because you might have a really good draft pick. You might be able to get one of the top two quarterbacks in this draft class. And this draft class does have two quarterbacks that I would feel comfortable drafting. Now, Shador, there are other things that you want to see from him. Jalen Milrow, I'm more comfortable with him, but you can flip the two. I think there's a lot of smart people who want Shador Sanders. There's a lot of smart people who want Jalen Milrow. But either way, you are probably going to have to do some rebuilding. The Browns situation this year probably puts that in much uh, more urgency than it would have been if the Browns had had a successful start to the season. And yeah, I think they were always going to have to do this soft rebuilding. And I think that's basically what they're going to do. But now there's more urgency at the quarterback position. Um, if that answers the question. Thank you for asking it. Chase says, are we bringing back Nick Chubb too soon? I don't think so. Um, I think there's some teams who would have been tempted to not even put Nick Chubb on pup and try to bring Nick Chubb back within four weeks. Um, the Browns have been really patient with Nick Chubb despite the fact that his progress has been significant. Um, like He was sprinting earlier in camp. They didn't rush him back to practice. A lot of teams might have been tempted to rush him back to practice, but they've been very patient. Put him on pup. Let him practice a week. They might do the same thing again this week. Like They seem like they're going to trust the process with Nick Chubb and get him out there when they feel like the timeline is right and not rush it based on how accelerated it seems like his progress making is or has been on this thing. So I think they're taking their time with Nick Chubb. I don't think they're rushing him back at all. Um, the next one is from Iceman the Boss. Do you think some of the drops are caused by inconsistency of reliable targets. I feel like the wide receivers are sometimes surprised to get an accurate catchable ball or simply not used to being in rhythm. I think that's part of the problem is that the wide receivers don't trust that if they get open, there's a good chance that they'll be seen. Um, I still think that you know when you're running a route versus a certain coverage, you have a good chance to catch the ball. So like, yes, Deshaun hasn't been accurate. Yes, Deshaun hasn't really seen the field well, but you should always be ready. And I don't know 
how much drops have been a problem outside of Amari Cooper. Um, Elijah Moore is kind of his natural ability to catch the ball or inability to catch the ball is what we've seen so far. We haven't seen anything kind of historic from him. Amari Cooper obviously dropping the ball at a much higher rate this season. And then you have Jerry Judy who's catching the ball about the same as he's always done. Like he's not a great catch through contact guy. He's never been a great catch through contact guy. And most of the drops that Jerry Judy he has or catches through contact so i don't know how much drops are an issue to even begin with and to the extent that they are a problem yes i do think that some of that is valid to say that oh because deshaun's not playing well they're not expecting the ball to come to him but at some point they just have to be professional about it and understand okay this is what i'm running i should get the ball here if i don't i don't but if i do i got to be ready to catch it right because you know at the end of the day it's the nfl um so you got to do what you got to do if you're these wide receivers retro gaming says obviously us fans want him to retire a brown but do you think a healthy nick chubb is a trade candidate or is he too critical to the locker room brand to be sold off in a partial rebuild I tend to be on the side that Nick Chubb trading him would be a bad idea. I talked about it in one of my videos uh, where I was talking about what I'm critical of Andrew Barry for, uh, especially as it relates to this whole Deshaun Watson situation that the Browns have ended up in, right? Because it's hard to parse out who was responsible for the Deshaun Watson trade. But one thing that pops up in this Deshaun Watson trade that has popped up in a lot of other Andrew Barry moves is this layer of cynicism that tends to be over the decision-making process for the Cleveland Browns. Sometimes the Browns make decisions based off of what it feels like it is on paper and not what the impacts are going to be with the people. And trading Nick Chubb would be cynical because yes, you could get a good pick for Nick Chubb and on paper, it might make sense to get a good pick for, for a running back who's getting older and older. Um, but I think it wouldn't be a great move when you look at what you're trying to build culture wise in the locker room. Nick Chubb's a huge part of it, right? You need mainstays. If you want to bring in a young quarterback to develop on this team, to possibly be the franchise quarterback, I think you need other people to kind of be able to lead the locker room culture. So that's not a burden that gets placed on a young quarterback. Like I want to just have the Browns kind of eliminate a lot of the pitfalls that they fell in with trying to develop Baker Mayfield, right? And why that whole thing didn't work out. And I think a huge part of why that didn't work out is when Baker Mayfield got drafted here, this team had no locker room culture. They were looking at Baker Mayfield to be the leader from day one. And that power vacuum kind of consumed Baker Mayfield at the end of the day and didn't really help him in his development. I don't want to see that happen to another young player here. Like you got to keep miles. You got to keep David. You got to keep Nick Chubb, these locker room leaders here, just so they, that these young guys that you're going to bring in with these first round draft picks that you're going to get um, over the next few years, have leadership to kind of understand what the culture and expectation should be in Cleveland. So that's why I'm not in favor of trading Nick Chubb. I understand why it makes sense on paper. I also think that Nick Chubb is a outlier human being. And just like how Derrick Henry is running really well at his age, I don't think that's impossible for a dude like Nick Chubb, even with the injuries that he's had. Uh, but thank you for the question. Eric says, do you see us ever going to a run heavy offense considering Nick Chubb's limits to being fully healthy this year? I don't know how often they will run Nick Chubb, but right now the Browns have four running backs on the roster. I think they intend to give carries to. You can even say five running backs on the roster, right? Pierre Strong is a player that they have made efforts to keep on this roster when they've had opportunities to move away from Pierre Strong. So that tells me they like Pierre Strong. And he's going to be on this roster. Naheem Hines, another case, right, of a player that they could have just taken off the roster because it was convenient. But they've went through the effort of keeping this player on the roster. So Naheem Hines is somebody I think they want to give carries to. Um, another player, De Deontay Foreman, right? Um, Jerome Ford and then Nick Chubb. That's five running backs. So, no, you wouldn't be running Nick Chubb 30 times. But you do have 
enough running backs that you feel good about in the building, or at least they feel good about in the building, that you could run the ball a ton within those five running backs. Because, like, why else would you have that many running backs if you didn't plan to run a ton of running backs, right? Um, Jack Barnes says, hey, Q, if Conklin is healthy, is there any thought of moving DeWan to right guard? I really think we should just let DeWan develop at right tackle before we start thinking about moving him over, right? If you look at the successful stories of guys moving from right to left tackle, they're young players who teams let develop on the right side for a couple of years, and then when that player was ready, they moved him to the left side. DeWan Jones does not look like he's ready for a position change right now. He looks like a dude who really needs to hone in on playing right tackle in the NFL before we can even really start considering him playing at left tackle in the NFL. So right now, just make sure DeWan Jones becomes a good right tackle. And if he gets to that point, then we can add more things to his plate. But, you know, from what I've seen this season, I feel like we added too much to his plate, him just having to start at right tackle for the beginning portion of this year so far. Um, but I think he's talented enough that he'll figure it out. Alexander Thornton says, hypothetically speaking, I do not believe this will happen. What if Watson puts on a show, 250 passing yards, three plus total touchdowns versus the Eagles? Does this mean the Watson era could live on a little bit longer? Um, Yeah, I mean, like it would probably extend people's patience a game or two. Um, it really would depend on how he follows it up. Like, I don't think I think we're beyond the point with Deshaun Watson where one game is going to change a lot of people's minds, right? I think that's just the reality we live in. He could throw for 400 yards, four touchdowns. Some will, some people will be excited. Some people will be very tentatively excited about that. But the truth is that Browns fans want to see it from Deshaun Watson consistently. And right now, I don't think there's a lot of faith that he's going to be able to deliver that kind of stuff consistently. Now, if he does that, six out of eight games, then all of a sudden, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more patience for Deshaun Watson, but he has to get to that point before we can discuss it. Um, but yeah, if he throws for 250 yards, it might extend this thing a game or two. It might give people more patience, but if he follows up a good game this week with another stanker, then we're going to be right back here because that's what's happened this season, right? Week one, bad. Week two, okay, cool. And then week three was horrible. Then we right back to where we were. Week four, I thought was a lot better. PFF thought it was one of his best graded games he's had in like years. And then you get to week five, and we were right back to where we started. And there's only so many times you can keep doing that to folks before they just give up on you entirely. So if he does it again where he plays well this week, and then he drops a bad one versus Cincinnati at home, it's going to be we're back in the same place, but even angrier about it. So he has to play consistently. I don't think one game is going to significantly change what's going on with Deshaun Watson at this point. Um, Jack says, what's your opinion on Jameis as a number one QB? He was a first overall pick in 2015, and yet it seems like he hadn't had a true opportunity to be a franchise guy, especially in New Orleans at the Breeze retired. Admittedly, I don't think I've ever watched him play an entire game, so I don't know a lot about him as a quarterback on the field. So Jameis is somebody who is a very talented quarterback who sometimes makes some very erratic decisions at the quarterback position. I remember watching a game last year where Jameis stepped in for Derek Carr and like within the first 10 plays of him throwing the ball, he throws a ball across his body, super ill-advised, but it, it ends up being a touchdown. Jameis is going to make some ill-advised throws. Jameis is going to throw that ball downfield. Like, think about it like this. It's very similar to what Joe Flacco used to do, where Joe Flacco would give you 50-50 balls. He would give guys chances to run underneath it. He would take chances downfield. Um, it would be like that, but Jameis is a little bit more mobile. I also don't want to set into expectation because I feel like a lot of people are setting themselves up for failure on this front that Jameis Winston is going to be anything more than what like Jacoby Brissett 
or Joe Flacco has been. Like, I think that's the top expectation I can have. I cannot sit here and say I expect Jameis Winston to become the next franchise quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. I think some people are talking themselves into that reality. I think best case scenario, Jameis becomes a bridge quarterback. Anything above that is well above my expectations for him. I think he's put together some good work. He's still going to be Jameis, which means he's going to make some erratic decisions. And sometimes it's because he thinks that he can like kind of outmaneuver defenses in a way because Jameis is a very, he's a very ambitious quarterback when he's back there. So that's my read on him. Again, you want him to be a, a bridge quarterback. Maybe he'll be a little bit more exciting than your average bridge quarterback because he's a bit of a gunslinger. Um, and I'd be interested to see, what that does in the Ken Dorsey system, because one of the criticisms that I've heard from people in Buffalo about Ken Dorsey's offense is that it kind of enables you to be too much of a gunslinger, right? Kind of uh, like the Bruce Arian system, which Jameis famously had 30 touchdowns, 5,000 yards and 30 interceptions. in. So it will definitely be if he plays interesting experience i'll put it like that i don't know if it's going to be good or not um but right now we know that the quarterback play for the cleveland browns is not just bad it is at the bottom of the league bad the only quarterback who's really hanging with Deshaun right now is bryce young and he's sitting on the bench and he's a second year player the next question comes from brian can the season be salvaged it really depends on what your definition of salvaged is if a playoff run is your definition of salvage, I think there's a possibility that the Browns can fix things and, you know, you get some players back and you get a run game back when Nick Chubb comes back and you go on a little bit of a run here late in the season and you push for a playoff run. I think there's a chance that that can happen and the Browns could be like a dangerous wild card team. Um, but the season that we hoped in the offseason – you start out one and four, it's going to be really, really next to impossible to, to get to where you hope to be there. So no, the season that we hope for in the off season, I don't think that's a realistic chance of that being sal a salvage, but I do think that there's a chance that this season can still be a fun season at the end of the day, or at least a season that, does not give you a whole year of misery. There is a chance there, but they have to do a lot of work. Quarterback play, whoever is playing quarterback at that point by the end of the season, it has to be unrecognizable from what we started with. I mean, this offense has to get a lot better, and this defense has to be a lot more consistent in order to get there, right? Like, it's not just going to be switching to quarterback that's going to get you there. You're going to need better defensive effort, better defensive play calling, and better – um effort from the offensive line especially right like you're gonna need better from them and you're probably gonna need to get healthy uh when it comes to nick chubb in order for that to happen but it is possible because this team is super talented that they could go on a crazy run um it's not probable but it is possible and i think there is something that could be salvaged there is just what salvage means to you might be different. Like if we're talking about salvaging our original expectations no. but if we're talking about salvaging um, some joy out of this season, I think there is a chance there, but that's it for Q and a y'all have a great day. Have even better night. Peace. <laughs>